Yeah, we feel like we're back. Now we're back. We had two people on our agenda. Yeah. Now, Newsweek magazine here, this, this, magazine, this magazine reminds me of Chicago. You know, it has three expressways. One named for Dwight Eisenhower, one for Adlai Stevenson, and one for Dan Ryan, a politician who was a friend of Mayor Daley. So they're all the same in Mayor Daley's lexicon. Anyway, don't worry about it. The convention won't be there. Now, here, here's Gloria Steinem with the Air Force sunglasses with a sweatband here. Now, discretion has kept me away from this, but, you know, I've watched her upward mobility, as she would put it herself here, over the years. She's an authority. She's on these programs. She's a celebrity by virtue of television. As Ambrose Bierce said, as a celebrity is a person who is famous for being well-known, I think, was the uh, <laughs> definition. Now, this girl, uh, when I met her, was writing for Help Magazine, which was an offshoot of Mad in Help. 1960. Yeah. All right. And uh, then she talked uh, somewhat about politics. She talked about all the things that confuse the issue. You know, you are a fist. American people are a fist. A fist. Yes, but sometimes you're fractionated in, into fingers. Women's lib, uh, Puma Indians, Black Panthers, how much air is in your hot dogs, how much mercury is in your swordfish. They got you going in all directions instead of being a fist, which is humanity. What did Camus say? The only decision is suicide. Do you want to live? Do you want to die? You know what the, what the revolution was in this country? The young people said, wait a minute, I'm Vietnam. I don't want to die. The old people said, go die. That's what it was. You decided to live, which is very brave, by the way. Now, but, now this girl, all right, now I, I follow this girl. And I know this girl. This isn't speculation. Yeah. I know this girl, but of course, because I'm discreet, uh, I won't say. <laughs> what, what do you like? What? <laughs> well, when you say, I know this girl, people begin to start thinking. I went out with this girl. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's, uh, it was uh, therapeutic. <laughs> for her, not for me. Uh, no, come on. I'm like cutting their lobes, you know. When I get through with them, they're, you know. You, now, you mean you ruin women? No, ruin them? Yeah. No, I educate them. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. They always, then they, then they try to outdo you. They get that competitive spirit. I wake them up. They usually uh, leave a Republican family, and uh, they're heading for the Communist Party when I get through with them. But that's their problem. <laughs> that's what... And you consider this a service? <laughs> I didn't say a public service. Oh, oh, okay. All right. So here's this article. Now she's... After... Now this girl who professes to be interested in America has written articles about such germane issues as uh, how many buildings are being torn down in New York, and uh, 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 Jim Brown, whether or not he's a black John Wayne, and what is chic, and how to keep from getting your nose peeling when you go to the beach. Cosmopolitan, you know, Helen Gurley Brown, uh, but th th who has higher goals. Meanwhile, she manages to circulate, not with poor people, because she couldn't be of service then. She's got to get there where she could be socially effective, you know, with John Kenneth Galbraith and Henry Kissinger, and uh, George McGovern at all. Okay, so she keeps moving. Now she's with Women's League. She's with Betty Friedan, Barbara Strident. And uh, <laughs> Betty Friedan and... Uh, <laughs> Barbara Strident. The pun. The pun, and, yes, uh, I, I know. We must raise the pun to the level it deserves. So... Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, Groucho does that. Oh, yeah. You yeah, heard what happened at right. Groucho in L.A., didn't you? What? With Nixon? No. He was on public television, Groucho, out there. You know, you know PBS. Yeah. Put your coat hanger out the window and you can get it. So, yeah. you have it on a regular channel here, don't you, Dick? Yeah, I think we do. Yeah, we yeah. don't have that. That's a local yeah. joke. So, uh, anyway, it's 28 in L.A. Mm. They said to Groucho, what can we do about the economy? So he says, well, the first thing somebody could do is shoot President Nixon. <laughs> so, two FBI agents arrived to arrest him on threatening the president's life. So somebody with some brains, obviously from a field office, not Washington, decided that even this absurdity would be more than America could stand. That's too much. But I don't think he ever said that, actually. That was, it was an interview for an underground paper, uh, uh, oh, and they yeah. misquoted him. Uh, I mean, he didn't say that. He, well, the underground paper quotes him as saying it on Yeah, PBS. the underground paper was quoted. Oh, well, quoted that's how it I came out. Well, he just... He just yeah, well, I don't Have think... You ever, you... But, I mean, that's a tremendous misquote. I mean, that's really violent misquote. Yeah, well, they've done that before. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that has to do with part of what I'm about uh, to uh, talk about. Now yeah. she's here to liberate you. What she's going to liberate you from is interesting. George Bernard Shaw said, if you demand your equality, you will renounce your superiority. 
In other words, I didn't think you'd laugh. You didn't laugh when he said it. Uh, but that's all right. Uh, the point being, the point being that if you, if you look, find a guy you respect and learn to surrender to him, the step down will be a step up. But if you think you can live alone, that's terrific. Hit 40 and live alone. It's fantastic. You'll love it. And you'll never have a chance to do it again. You only have to do it once. Now, here she is with Shirley Chisholm and uh, Betty Friedan and uh, Bella Abzug. And no reflection on them because they're very active in the legislative process, especially Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Chisholm. Now, uh, and now uh, she comes down here, uh, uh, Gloria, and she talks about uh, the fact that a marriage is when you're uh, half a person, which is uh, interesting. We all ought to know that. All the women that have been, uh, that's all, right? And then we go on here, and it says here, she was born in Toledo, Ohio, the second daughter of an itinerant Jewish antique dealer, proving that all poor people don't go to the left, because over here on page 53, we find out she settled for a job with an offshoot of the National Student Association, a partially funded central intelligence agency outfit that posted American kids to communist-run youth festivals in Europe. Now, it's nice to know if you're a friend of hers up at Allen's. Uh, what is Allen's? That's a, uh, a bar up here on the 2nd Avenue, I believe, oh. and 3rd uh, Avenue. And uh, you can see how many bars I go into. It's a hamburger joint, yeah. not a bar on television. It's a hamburger joint yeah. and uh, where we drink a lot of water. And uh, <laughs> it's nice to know that if you're a friend of hers, that every 20 minutes a shuttle leaves via Eastern Airlines with everything you just said to go to Washington. Isn't that pleasant to know? Especially for those of us who have known her 12 or 15 years. It's nice to know that when the men she stood next to, like Senator McCarthy, when you mentioned the fact that in Los Angeles, there's an investigation going on of Sirhan Sirhan's trial because there are many discrepancies according to Mr. Bush, the district attorney, not according to me, that she remains silent. It's nice to know that George McGovern's staff may be penetrated by people from the Central Intelligence Agency. It's nice to know that the entire left wing of the Democratic Party may be penetrated. And on this program, on this program, where I have my longest tenure in television, you know, you and I, except for Jerry Lewis, <laughs> my longest tenure. Jerry, except for that, except for that, that on this program, when I said to her, why don't you read Ramparts? She said, for the same reason I don't read Time Magazine. I know what they're going to say. I said, do you think Ramparts is penetrated by CIA people? who pose as leftists. She said, oh, the CIA is penetrated. And she did a pretty good job of making me look like a paranoid. And I'm sure that you all believed it, and you should have. She characterized me as that. What you didn't see is a wire at 4.30 in the morning at the St. Regis Hotel, where you put me up very graciously, saying to me that I've been a bad girl, and I apologize for what I've done. Now, so, that's their woman of the year. You think she's a success? Is that what you want to be? Don't you want to be in open combat? In other words, what is her role? Is her role to penetrate the left, to stand next to George McGovern? Something to think about. That's Newsweek's Woman of the Year. Hmm. Something to think when, about. When will you be seeing Gloria again? Uh. <laughs> when I see her, I'm going to ask her why she's disenchanted with John Lindsay, as it says here. Because oh. she told all of you to vote for him. Yeah, she's disenchanted. I'll ask her if I get the chance. Yeah. Well, no, I'd rather have you do it. Nixon for mayor. We, 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 have, a, we have a message from our local stations, and we'll be right back.